Hi there and welcome back to the Dark Queen of Kryn. I am Byron, we are in the city of Palanthes and are about to enter the palace to talk to General Lorana. You enter the palace and are quickly escorted to General Lorana's chambers. As you enter she rises from her seat by the fireplace and smiles warmly at you. And here we actually have Lorana, pretty picture. Although I think it's difficult with those unearthly beautiful elven women. Um, the pictures almost never really do them justice. Because it's actually difficult, because when you're reading the books and the elves are described, um, you have like sort of like a picture of them in your head, but it's it's not a real defined picture, it's more like an abstract version of perfect beauty and whenever that is like put into solid form it almost always falls short somewhat because it's um, it's impossible to put the, the abstract idea into a solid form and that the form would actually match the idea 100 percent so it's well it's she's pretty and all but I always thought uh, Lorana would be you know prettier oh well I'm just rumbling here. Ah, my champions, I am honored by your presence. Come and sit with me. There is a chill in the air this morning. I am afraid I have distressing news to share with you. Once again, our beloved Kryn needs your aid. The general stares sadly at the flames as she recounts her story. This is recorded as journal entry 54. Oh well, where is it? To do some leafing. The general. It has been but a short time since you so valiantly helped us crush the Dragonian army. Yet, such is the nature of these creatures that to sever the head from the beast only invites it to grow another. My emissaries have reported that some Draconian scum may have survived and are again gathering to the south. We must know if this is true. Every day we wait as foolhardy for the, for the danger may be growing. But the good people of Pelanthus deserve the hard won peace they now enjoy. From time to time I still see the shadows of old fears fleeting across their faces. I will not add to their troubles by letting this unproven rumor reach their ears. That is why I implore you, brave heroes, to hasten to Sargoth and discover what truth there is in these fearful reports. My friends, your mission is urgent. The lives of many lay in your hands. Send me word of what you find and may Paladine be with you. Okay, I guess that's our clue to actually leaving this uh, city. You mount the steeds waiting for you and head south. The journey is uneventful but you hear many rumors that confirm Lorana's fears. After several days you approach Sargoth. The air is thick with a stench of smoldering runes as tendrils of smoke rise above the forest. You dismount and approach the city cautiously. Okay, let's take a look around. Uh, okay. Ah, we could return to Palanthus. No, I don't want to. Lorana would not be pleased if we would return with empty hands. And no news. What's up here? Nothing really. Okay. Oh, here we see the city walls. There actually are several two entrances. You come upon what was once Sargoth and record your observations as General Entry 65. <coughs> Rubble. Before you lies the smoldering ruins of Sargoth. Everything is blasted and burned. Once sturdy buildings are sagging and melted, their stone runs like candle wax. The sickening odor of burnt carrion floats on the gentle breeze as vultures circle through the smoke. Then you notice the fuming pools of acid in the streets. Draconians have been here. 
The only consolation is that some of them paid for this abomination with their lives. Well, apparently not enough. Because they were successful. Okay. Not good. Really not good. The smoldering ruins of these blasted dwellings are deserted. Huge shadows skim over the ground. Giant shapes disappear over the treetops. That's not nice. Dragons descend around you. Well, well, you must be the owners of that lovely ship. What ship? We could have used that a few nights ago. Alas, it is useless to us now, and so are you. They attack. Okay, what do we have? Um, two blue dragons. Oh, and a green one, too. Oh, how... Not nice. Um... Well, how about you move away? Like really, really far. Done. And yell. Okay. So let's take a look. The, the dragon has 72 hit points and those dragons have actually 80 hit points. Hmm. Well, you could cast a delayed blast fireball. Um, but then again, yeah, we do it. Let's not fuck around here. Not don't go get too close to the wall. That's deadly. And you don't have to have to hit M anymore to get moving. Done. Cast. Oh, a meteor, meteor swarm. Let's try that. Never tried that before. Oh. Okay. Wait a second. Can you get to that? Yeah, you can probably get it. That means you start slaying them. Ah, I, I don't have to hit M. I keep forgetting that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have to hit M. Why do I do it then? And I don't have to hit Enter, I have to hit D. Yeah, I still have to get used to the controls. Um, I'm gonna give you something that you will really like. A magic missile. Fuck. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. Uh, well, it, it does hurt, but Randy Spears can surely take it. Oh, really? And now you finally cast your spell. What is the range of a meteor swarm? Let me check that. Um, area special. <laughs> really? Could it be more precise? A little at least? Um. Meteor Swarm is a very powerful and spectacular spell similar to Fireball when cast four magic spheres fly from the caster's hand towards the target. Anything in the spell's path receives a 10 to 40 hit points of damage. Oh, it's okay, it's about the path. That's good. Nothing is in the way. Oh, he only has eight. What a waste. Uh. Sorry. Oh, good God. What a waste. Overkill galore. Ow. 
uh, magic missile would have done the trick as well. You discover the body of a slain boy. Do you bury him? Sure. As you lower him into a shallow grave, you notice that he was slain, not by dragons, but with a sword. And we encamp and fix and rest. And actually I found out the moon thingy is not gone. Um, it, But it only is shown here when you actually can memorize an additional bonus spell. Uh, since she already has all the bonus spells memorized that she can use, it doesn't show here. Oh well. Get away. And um, we move on. A sobbing woman and a small child are attempting to dig graves for their family. What do you do? Well, we help them. The woman smiles smiles through her tears. Bless you, gentlefolk, for your kindness to a poor widow. Her smile turns to a frown as she continues. Beware the flying dragons, lest you meet the fate of the ones I loved. Don't worry, we can handle dragons. You see the tall mast of a ship rising near the harbor. The stench of brimstone rises from the collapsed wreckage of a smithy. The shrill cry of a feasting vulture rises above the ravaged city. Ruins of a fine house have been scorched. What metal remains has been melted into molten puddles, which have since hardened. A blue dragon did this. The signs are unmistakable. Yeah, we slew a few uh, blue dragons. The smoldering roots of this blasted dwelling are deserted. The walls of a destroyed home have crumbled inward amid admit the ashes and scoot of an intense fire. Vandals have wrecked barrels and spilled grain in this warehouse. The burned out office of the dockmaster, what remains is tossed in disarray. Suddenly a group of swarthy sailors brandish their swords. Looters! What do you want here? Answer carefully. Wait, you call that a sword? I call that a tiny knife. Oh well, we explain. One of the sailors steps forward. I am Danor, captain of the merchant vessel Silver Shark. We arrived here late last night to find our city burned and ravaged. The few that remain have told us a terrible tale. This is recorded as General Entry 59. Captain's story. Hundreds of draconians invaded, pillaging the town and impounding the entire fleet of ships. Only those who could steer the ships were spared, everyone else either escaped or was slaughtered. Once they took what they wanted, a horde of blue dragons leveled the buildings and incinerated, inc incinerated anyone trying to take refuge. The monsters then sailed out to sea, leaving this village a charred ruin. One how many? Hundreds of Draconians. Where did they come from? How can such an army of Draconians move through the lands unnoticed? Well, I can't wait no longer. I must set sail and follow the loathsome beasts. My sister Crisia is among those kidnapped. Okay, so there's a personal... That's a personal story for him. Of course, I would want to get my sister back too. We have gathered what supplies we could uh, and are ready to sail after these monsters. Your presence would honor us. Do you wish to join us? And who is going to tell Lorana of what happened here? Um, I guess the game expects us to join. Very well. Come strangers. Our adventure begins. Wait. I thought your sister had been kidnapped. And do you think of this as an adventure? Hmm. The captain and crew quickly set the sails of the Silver Shark, and soon you are sailing north along the coast of Ancelon. You have hardly had time to get your sea legs before you hear the lookout yell, Wreckage of the starboard bow! That's one of the town's ship run aground. I'm going ashore to investigate. Will you join me? Well, we've come this far. Might as well see it through to the end. 
You quickly row ashore with Captain Danor. Soon you discover the area around the wreck is littered with human footprints along with the tracks of draconians. You follow the trail up the beach to a cave halfway up the cliff wall. And oh, Captain Danor joins our party. Let's take a look at him. He's 45 years old, a paladin. Wow, of the 30th level, he has 7.7 .7 million <laughs> experience points. And I was afraid my party might be overleveled. Well, apparently not. His stats are quite decent. Constitution of 17, strength 1855. Yeah, 16, 18, 16, 17, 17. Can't complain with that. Complain about that, it's good. And that stuff probably orders magical. Not too shabby, if you ask me. So, um. Oh, yeah, there's something else I want to show you that I didn't show you. Alt. Uh, first of all, we change the party order because, well, if you are happen to be a paladin, you will be up here. Exit. And um, the icons actually have changed. See, I. You can no longer design your own icons. You have to choose one of the pre-generated icons, and that is the icon the game thought that a uh, Rekaldorian or a female knight should have. And I'm 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 quite fine with that. I, I took a look took a look at all the icons of my characters and yeah. I think the game chose quite wisely. It's okay. Yeah yeah we have Sylvia Saint. I would love if she had like real armor on but at least she's has a, a maze equipped. This is Zara White's. This is, <laughs> of course, this is a red mage, but that's gonna be Genevieve Julie. See? And Kobe Tai is a candle. Is um, this one here. That's cool. Looks like a female candle. So I will not mess around with the icons. I think they're cool. Okay, and we actually can take a look at the area. That's always good. Move on. Randy Spears turns and says, Something smells rotten. I think it's draconian. Hmm, I like the smell of draconian in the morning. Smells like victory. Our victory. Kobitai halts the party. A trap, she hisses. Well, we can avoid it. I can try to disarm it or just ignore it and see what happens. That would be quite a stupid decision. Try to disarm it. Kopitai jams a rock into a wooden pulley in the ceiling. Yeah, that ought to do it, she says. Okay, I disabled the trip line. Well, that was easy. But she gains experience. Moving on. Randy Spears stops the party for a moment, takes a deep breath, smiles and says, Glory, there be dwarves here. That's a fine smelling dwarf nail. Everyone else is holding their breath against the nauseating odor. And I really like that. I mean, I, deci I designed my party in a way that we have all the main races in the party and it didn't have any effect in the first two games. I really like that they actually um, give our characters some background, that they react differently to certain situations because of their heritage, their race and their upbringing. I, I really like that. That's cool. The loathsome stench from broken casks nearly overpowers everyone. This is a storage area filled with discarded furniture, lost clothing and other misplaced items. A noise behind some furniture alerts the party to four sleeping long unwashed draconians. What do you do? Uh, kill them? Your first blow sobers up the draconians, they attack. Excuse me? You were not able to kill them in their sleep? How about slitting their throats? <sighs> the battle begins. Alright, what do we have? 
a Sivak, another Sivak, a third one, and a Bozak. Okay. I don't think we need magic here. Missed. Well. Oh, I don't have to hit him. I keep forgetting that. You're dead. You're not casting. Oh, you're exploding too. You could yell. That's always fun. I for always forget that I don't have to hit M. And you're dead. That was quite an easy battle if you ask me. 1077 experience points and we get treasure. Oh, 70 steel. Hmm. I don't need your money. Keep it. Exit. No, I will not go back. Anything else here? We already had that. Fix. And um, take a look around. Apparently there's nothing here. But we killed our first four draconians. And it was easy. I don't think that we really I don't really think we need to go there. But if you just would just walk around the corner here, okay, I get it. You hear ferocious voices and cause laughter to the north. The room is filled with draconians. They see you and begin to growl. A bedraggled young girl is helping a Sivak put on his armor. Cruzia! cries Captain Dano. That's Cruzia, that's his sister. Okay. The head looks a little odd. As the horrified uh, too large, see? In the back? Mm, I don't know. And uh, there's too much you know the eyes there's too much of the head left and right of the eyes. Mm, oh well. The proportions are some a little off. Well as the horrified as the horrified girl turns toward you a wizard yells quickly wench, warn the others. As the monsters rush forward, the girl rushes to the north and disappears into a cave opening. The monsters attack. Ah, uh, what do we have? Oh, Oryx. Yeah, the problem with Oryx is I didn't didn't know that when I recorded the Champions of Krun. Oryx can turn invisible at will. That's why I couldn't target them. So you could cast the Detect Invisibility if you want. To I don't know. Maybe you could get rid of that. Uh, if you cast a uh, detect invisibility. And I hope the ability wouldn't override a spell. But you could also like cast a fireball or delayed blast fireball and um, on a place that is not occupied by, uh, by an auric, then it works. And yeah, once they attack you can see them for the rest of the round and then they get invisible, become invisible again in the beginning of the next round. But I think I will actually use a delayed blast fireball here to actually kill them and you have to be remember there's three stages then they have first they have a normal stage then when you kill them you, they get 20 hit points again and are like mad and once you kill them a second time they get to their third stage and after a while they will explode and if you then happen to be standing next to them when they explode you might get paralyzed that never is fun okay costs uh delayed blast fireball why because we can and you do it here so here you, you, we don't get this one i think but we get all the oryx that's good Ooh, 102 points of damage. Goes mad. The 
good thing is when a Bozak dies, he explodes. That means when this Bozak dies, he will explode and hurt this one too, so he can't cast. Ha ha And you cast a regular fireball. No, you don't. You're your you're cleric. You can't do nothing of that. Oh, I don't have to hit M. I keep forgetting that. I don't have to hit Enter. Just hit D and G. God. No, done and God. You. M move a little closer. Done. And cast a fireball. That should be enough to finish them off. Yep, if they save, they get uh, to take 31 damage, and that's enough to kill them a second time. So they can't escape the spell. Ha ha, sucks to be you. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to hit M, I keep forgetting it, I'm sorry. So we close a little. That's actually... Oh, I say we stay here. Done. And you switch to your to your ranged weapon. Of course, there's still this Bozak in the background. Let's see where you can hit him. Yeah, that worked. I keep hitting him. Done. Aim. Manual. Target. Missed. Done. Uh, that was the wrong button. I wanted to hit the V. Because you should also use your bow. Good riddance. Uh. Yeah, and and get your long sword back. You also get your melee weapons back. Level thirty. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Let's talk about overkill here. And. 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 Well, a few hours later, those Oryx will actually explode. Uh, right now. Uh, 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 and that, my friends, is how you deal with a truckload of Oryx. Continue the battle? No! 8,328 experience points. And we get t t t t treasure. Ah, oh, just money. Okay. No, I don't want it. Keep it. Leave me in peace. So, how about we call the video and continue the next one? Oh, wait, before we do that, there's something we could still do. Because, see, um, you don't see the door in here, but there actually is one. Each character receives 600 experience points, and we have found treasure. What do we get? Money. Okay, I take the jewelry. 
um, select one. Ah, numlock. Ah, yeah. I always keep forgetting that the numpad doesn't seem to work in this game. And, and items? A white mage scroll and a shield. Uh, let's take a look at... Well, you take the white mage scroll, that's for sure. Exit. Exit. And you actually detect. Is it any good? It is magical. We take it then. Exit. No, I don't want it. And here we are. So we end camp. And rest. And get our shit back. And call it the video. So thank you very much for watching. And see you soon.